we really only have one topic for today. So for the couple of minutes while we're waiting for folks to join, if you want to possibly read to the proposal. Hey, y'all. I will be uh, lurking mostly. Doing I'm, laundry? I'm hoping, I'm hoping for this meeting to get moved to an earlier time. So. Amen. I know that I've got some folks on my team that want to join the call too, but they're all in Europe, so it's not good that way either. But yeah. um, I was hoping to talk about the um, encryption, image encryption stuff. Um, I, know I was, I was, I was I meant to email you, but I didn't actually have your email and any of my personal stuff. So I'm glad you joined. Yeah, I, I'm not sure what I exactly want to discuss. So maybe also if this time doesn't work for you, we can figure another time to talk about it first as well. Hey, Brandon. So the only downside, because we, we should have time today, the only downside is we've been trying to get the agenda items out early in the week so that folks that want to attend know to block the time. So that would be the only disadvantages. I don't know if you have the people that are most interested attending today. Well, I'm I'm not kind of sure where we are yet on this. I think yeah, I was about to say yeah. some of it is even just going to be kind of level setting of like where y'all are with the encrypted layers rolling out and pushing to registries and all that kind of stuff versus where the um, kind of like the different where and how best to keep a registry of different media types that are showing up in the wild because. Um, I'm assuming that y'all have like moved moved along with supporting encrypted layers, but um, as far as attraction of where best to record it on the OCI front, I just kind of wanted to level set and talk through where y'all where y'all were, Brandon. But we can add it to the agenda for sure. Yeah, maybe we can um, discuss discuss it and then we can add it to next week's agenda. Um. Yeah, we can discuss it over email, kind of figure out what we're going to talk about, and then we can add it for next week. I mean, if you guys want to like key it up for have this, some conversation, then folks can watch the recording and then follow up next week. Maybe that's a good start. Kind of like tease it here. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, I don't want to hijack this, so <laughs> go ahead with the regular agenda first, I guess. Yeah, I was just giving the, the five minutes for people to uh, join the call and possibly start reusing, reading the, the stuff that Nisha and Rose put together. So uh, with that, we're at five minutes when we get started and we can take the remaining time to have you key up the encryption stuff. Okay. Um, so, hi, my name is Rose Judge. Um, I work with Nisha at VMware. Nisha is not able to join today. Um, but the proposal that we've put together um, is um, a little background on it is essentially we want to write SPDX documents for containers and other things. Um, other artifacts that might be stored in registries, um, but in order to do that, we need a canonical format for an OCI artifact package URL. Um, and what the SPDX specification is looking for is a string that represents a specific container or, or OCI artifact um, in the SPDX document. And um, SPDX 3.0 will require a URI. Um, and to satisfy that requirement, we can use Perl, um, but we want it to be consistent across all OCI artifacts so that um, we don't have, you know, 20 different Perl entries for 20 different types of OCI artifacts. So um, the proposal that we have um, that we'd like to submit to the Perl specification is starts um, where it says OCI in the link from the agenda. Um, and I can also drop that in the chat if that's easier for people. Oh, looks like Phil already, did, did Phil already do that? Uh, 
I don't think so. Okay, I put it in the chat, but um, essentially um, for all artifacts that are stored in um, OCI distribution spec conformant registries, um, for a pearl, there are um, parts of the pearl that are defined for each type of package. Um, so we tried to transcribe those to describe OCI artifacts. So um, the we are proposing that the uh, an OCI pearls namespace that it describes the type of artifact stored in an OCI registry and um, the reason that we made this choice is um, because there's no package repository for OCI artifacts. Um, so the artifact needs to be registry agnostic and therefore we didn't think that the namespace should describe the registry or name the actual registry, but rather it should describe the type of artifact. Um, and then the rest um, is, pretty much a one-to-one -one translation. So the name um, of the OCI artifact would be um, the name of the repository. Um, and then the version is the SHA-256 digest of the artifact. Um, and then there's optional qualifiers that you can use to describe the artifact. So things like architecture, repository, tag, subpath, um, and then we outline some examples of what that might look like for different types of artifacts. Um, so in the Perl spec currently, there is an entry for Docker images, but we wanted to expand that to be more broad in covering all types of OCI artifacts. Um, and I think the idea is that we would um, either replace or at least point to OCA artifacts under the Docker entry for Perl. Um, but I, we wanted to discuss it here, um, record any questions, concerns. Um, I see some, some uh, comments in the chat, but feel free to speak up and be careful. Oh yeah, uh, I, think it's, I think it's great, great uh, first step. Um, specifically, are we there is is the effort to target uh, only SPDX 3.0 or is any amount of this um, working with past versions, I guess? Um, well, Perl is so it would be backwards compatible right now. So artifact URL is going to be a new field in SPDX 3.0 right now. Um, Perl is used as package URL. Um, so there's an entry called package URL. However, because we want to use SPDX to define um, not just software, but hardware as well, we're changing that field to artifact URL. Um, so it will be backwards compatible with SPDX 2.2. Okay, right on. And uh, the, my, my comment there in the chat just uh, a second ago is like just, two ways about, um, I guess, specifically the transport, because now, as we've seen, like policy changes and stuff like that happen with Docker, that mm -hmm. people are pushing basically some of the same content to like Quay or G uh, Google, uh, not Google, GitHub registry or whatever registry. So it might even be like similar namespace. I guess at that point, it's the same. Maybe it doesn't matter. And if it's just identifying same content in different places, to disambiguate that it might actually be the same content. It's just stored in different places. You'd have to embed the, the digest right there in the identifier. But I guess I'm just noodling for that. that that's actually exactly the goal, Vincent. It was, um, it's not to your, we were initially thinking about it, you know, consume the public content and I bring it into the private registry inside you know, some environment. And I wanna be able to um, have SBOMs or whatever the content refers to those. Well, in case it is SBOMs, and I shouldn't have to go to some public location like Docker Hub or whatever, but it's just as relevant to that somebody publishes the exact same content on Docker Hub, on ECR public, on GitHub, or other public redistribution registries. The idea is that the SBOM would be able to refer to it regardless of where it is in that, which registry it is, or even which namespace it is in that registry. It's literally the last last portion, the, the repo, 
and the digest is really the uh, the thing that gives it an identifier. Yeah, I guess since there's a gap in the conversation, I'll just say it instead of just typing it. Um, yeah, the, the only concern with taking out the repo and registry name in there and just having the short field is that you, you get the confusion when you have two different, the same name meaning two, two very different things potentially. And so if a company goes out and extends Java and puts in all their own stuff in there and it's no longer anything that looks like OpenJDK upstream, but it still has the same short name, it just puts everything in the same namespace. So it adds a little bit of confusion, but there's a huge value to being able to make these things comparable when they're, when they are identical and getting copied around. So I'm um, just like Vince on that one, kind of two minds of it. Yeah. And there is, so this, um, in an SPX document, there is an element ID and then an artifact URL. Um, so if you had two artifacts that were the same artifacts in different registries, the element IDs would be unique to um, the SPDX properties of each artifact. Um, and since they're in different registries, those properties would compute differently to provide unique element IDs. Um, the artifact URL, we're trying to get it. It's impossible, of course, to come up with like a global identifier that will always compare equal to um, you know, in all cases, we'll compare equal to the same artifact in different registries, but the goal here is just to get it as close as possible um, so that even if a machine or a computer wasn't able to determine that these are the exact same artifacts, like a human looking at the two um, pearls for the artifact URLs would be able to inference that they are. Um, so, yeah, the, the only other option I can think of is to have some kind of every person that builds whatever image it is defines this is my canonical location. And so you would know that it's either supposed to be Docker Hub or GHCR or something like that. And that becomes your yeah. name, even if you copy it somewhere else. Yeah, I can see where it's like it's a kind of, you know, OCI image or OCI artifact or whatever it is. So it's like PKG colon OCI slash and then like the hash and it's just completely disambiguated of like, where did you get it from or anything like that? You might be able to add the hints on the end, you know, like the query parameters. Yeah. Like, check these registries or check these repository names, but we're talking about this specific digest. Everything else is just a hint. And the, the optional qualifiers there is like as a repository, you can put the repository URL, um, but that's not required, but you can put that if you want to differentiate, like this is from Docker versus Quay. Basically you get the hint in addition. Yeah. I like it. I'm, I'm confused about, um... I guess in the spec it's called what a namespace. So if I'm reading this correctly, a proposal is to have like a truncated media type as a namespace for OCI stuff. That would be a great piece of the conversation here. Um, uh, we were struggling a little bit with encoding slashes, the full namespace, is version important? Like if, if that was the chunk we wanted to chew on, there's some great, you know, that would be a great thing to say, okay, everything but that is good and let's just figure out how to narrow that part down. I think, um, so it's kind of weird because like we have two systems that are trying to abstract over each other, uh, maybe even three if you include SPDX. And so I, it's kind of like trying to put bags inside each other and it's not gonna work super well. Uh, the things I think are important from like an OCI perspective are to capture maybe just like a descriptor. Can we put all the descriptor properties of something in like these optional qualifiers? Like yeah. uh, the media type size and digest are, maybe digest is the version. I don't know, I'm trying to map OCI onto this and it's, it's challenging. Yeah, so digest is the version, I think um, as far as the Perl spec, like you could include any 
qualifier label and its value as an optional qualifier. So these are just examples of like common um, descriptors, arc, repository, tag, subpath, um, or sorry, not subpath, tag. But uh, yeah, you could put others if you thought of them or wanted to. OK, so I, I think the issue, and I'm seeing it now, is that like name is required. A name is required for Perl. Right. Uh, but we want these to be location independent. Right. Uh, so we could put anything there. I don't, uh, I don't know. This is a strange one. What do you mean you I could put anything there? If we don't want there to be a name, right? Like we want these to be completely independent. Of, of Why don't you want to do? I, I think it's fine to have a name as a hint. So, um, would the name be like the uh, repository in a, in a registry? I, I know that's the that's, <laughs> that, that's that's what I mean as far as a hint. It could be a comma delimited list of hints. Uh, but then it would be a different image. But if it was like yeah. Docker IO VBAT to my app is the name, then I um, might one day push that to some other place. And now it's broken. I don't know. Right. Okay. Yeah, is there, is there what some... makes it broken if it's moved? Because the using the example you just had, my app and the digest would be the unique identifier. And VBATS is the namespace, or potentially Docker IO VBATS. Is... Uh, there's a no, the namespace would actually be whatever that thing is. If it's a container image, it would be. Uh, OCI.image vis-a-vis the, the media type expansion or con contraction. So assume we decide on whatever the current media type is that we use for the artifact type, so that config.manifest.media type or manifest config media type or artifact type in the manifest spec. The, the point is, is the repo and the digest is what kind of ties them together. So there's human and computer readable, human readable and computer verifiable. And so if someone take, sorry. Uh, so just the last piece to it is that we originally, or originally, one of the iterations had the artifact type as one of the um, parameters, you know, the optional parameters. And it just seemed like maybe we should use that in the namespace because we're, it looked like a good prob, a good way to solve that problem. So uh, I'm trying to understand this. So is the assumption that if we, do move a container that there's going to be some intermediate tool that's actually going to go in and change the original name to somewhere else because wouldn't it be confusing to move an image from one registry to another and then to pull it and have that that uh, repository be just something totally different well either that or if you're expecting these i guess my thing is more that if you're expecting the identity of this thing to be effectively permanent you know and if I have, if I'm the owner of VBAT, my app, and I move it to Quay, and then one day in the future you see Docker AO VBAT, my app, and that doesn't exist anymore, you know, or I was like, I've migrated my stuff off. Does that break some kind of attestation down the path? Where it's like, no, it's actually exactly the same image. You just found it from a different place. Now. But the digest would still be the same, right? Ideally, yeah, that's, that's, that's where I'm trying to like work through that part of it of like really the digest is key. And if it just happens to be called VBATS, my app or on Docker, Quay, GC, you know, Google, GitHub, whatever, then that's kind of beside the fact. So maybe VBATS, my app, or maybe it's just the digest, I don't know. I guess the, an issue that kind of comes to my mind is like, let's say that I discover a container lying around and I want to find like the original source and it has some registry that doesn't exist anymore. It's kind of like a useless identifier. It becomes like, like kind of, um, I think John said this, like you could just put anything in there, put potatoes and whatever, like it just, it's just not, it's not really useful for anything. As long as you have the digest then maybe you could figure it out some other way, but the name really wouldn't matter. I mean, do you need, the, the idea is the S-bomb, the combination of the S-bomb and the thing, like does it, you may or may not care where the original thing came from. It's that's why it's really an optional hint. The thing is, you have this image, you have an S bomb for it. 
The assumption is there's some signatures around it that ensure its integrity. But the point is, is that between the combination of the SBOM and you have this thing, you have a way to decide whether you want to use it, move forward, whether the linkage to it is still the same. I mean, it's, it's kind of like picking up the USB stick off the street, right? It's like there may actually be something usable in there or it may not. Maybe that's not the there's best. Also, there's also lots of other context around what this artifact is in the SPDX document. This is one descriptor in the SPDX document. So we're, this is not like the only way that we're going to identify an OCI artifact is this artifact URL. This is just giving more context as a descriptor. There's other, other things that are describing it in, the, in an SPDX document. So if you do a comparison between two different ones of these, are you only looking at everything before the optional? And so you assume yeah. that things after the optional could change and it doesn't really matter? Yes, optional is not, uh, the optional qualifier is not used for comparison. Got it. They're just- To Vanessa's point, you, 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 you should be able to put it in another registry and you should, and you do not have to do anything to change anything. Like, that's exactly the, the point. Isn't the version optional? The version is um, optional in the Perl spec. So I'm trying to understand how these things will be used because like if people are just going to compare these two strings without really thinking about it, then I think it's a terrible idea to put the registry anywhere. If, if well, there's like parsing mechanisms that tease out specific things they want to compare, then I, what, what, what things are those? What do you mean to put the registry anywhere? Like as in, in an optional qualifier? Uh, yeah, so it, the repository inside this name slash namespace field or even uh, in an optional qualifier to have the registry domain. I, I think that's how the Docker one does it. Mm -hmm. it, it. I guess it depends on how this is going to be used. Like, are people going to compare these to see if they're the same thing? And if so, we should probably avoid any URLs anywhere. Um, but if they're not just going to compare them, then it seems helpful to have a URL you know, in some cases. So the URL will not be used to compare. Um, that would be an optional qualifier. When you uh, say URL, you're talking with the registry URL? Um, repository. Yeah. yeah. But um, I do see, like, I, I see your point with version being optional um, because version is kind of like the, um, uh, what stays the same across registries. Um, I mean, I guess one option is to put the, uh, the digest as the name and then it's required and will always be there. Um, I like that. I'm curious to ask folks a general question because this has come up a lot when we, we think about artifacts that move between registries and, and so forth. What if you think about all most of the other package managers, the name of the package is the same. Like it, it generally doesn't change the name when it moves across. And it's in fact you do an NPM restore of a package name and you separately configure where you get it from. Do we, and while it's technically possible to say Docker pull, Docker tag, Docker push and change the repo name, what position do we want to suggest is the, I don't know, standard guidance, best practice, spec, whatever, so that an Alpine, and I just saw Alpine, is an Alpine image is still the Alpine image in another registry. And you can technically rename it, but does that become an invalidator to it? being the same thing, I, I struggle with it. Because a digest is great for computers, but you still need, in most cases, you need to know where to look for that digest in a registry. Yeah, this is a tricky, tricky problem. And even you said it in the chat earlier, isn't this kind of the same problem that you have with package managers? And this is like an <laughs> age old debate of like, you know, I'll package this for RHEL and I package it for CentOS, they might have vastly different build environments. So just because they come out with the same bash 5.1, they're not the same thing. So all these kind of like CPEs and all, you know, SWID tags and all these kind of things might arrive at something that almost looks exactly the same, but they're not, even if they have the same version, they might've been patched or built differently. 
Um, and even further, when you go down that, like a package, in, a Ruby gem or an NPM package that now has its identifiers is like an NPM package, but it also has RPM identifiers. Now, you, you know, like they, they, they might have very similar names. Uh, you end up having to have like an ownership of that namespace. So like in your example, like Alpine, if there was some way to say, actually, you know, it's embedded in there, some kind of signature of like a thing that could have only been put there by the Alpine creators or something like that. Uh, and anybody that packages that couldn't have tampered with this validatable signature. And that's just not a problem that any pa software packagers have solved yet. So whether you build something and call it Alpine on Docker and you build something and call it Alpine on Quay, to say it's actually Alpine is not quite a, a known pattern. That would solve this a little bit differently um, if you said when you want to use this that there would be uh annotation or something like that on the image that you're including. And so if you pushed up Alpine, you would push up in your Alpine image an annotation that says, this is my unique uh, common name that I have, my canonical name that might include a registry and something like that. And so even if you copy it to another registry, that annotation still has to be copied with it to keep the digest the same. And so you would have that original upstream canonical name copied across with it that way. How would you manage that namespace though? Like you could push an annotation with your special name and then I could just take your special name and use it in my image, for example. You could lie. Um, I'm thinking this would Obviously. be- Obviously, that would be my first step, I'd lie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm thinking this would be a pointer to somewhere that you actually did upload it. And so the Alpine would be saying, I am docker.io slash library slash Alpine. And so you could check that repo and see if that actually assisted there. It's a, a huge assumption you have access to that thing. Even if it's public, doesn't mean you have access to it in a private environment. Yeah. I'm just what trying to think of a way. Go ahead, sir. I was, I was saying, I was thinking of a way you could potentially have a name in there that has the full repo name, but still be portable. And so I'm thinking well, of that process. It, is it needed though? I mean, the it, digest it is the way to assure it's unique, right? Like if two people build Alpine, you know, the between what's in the SBOM and the contents and so forth and the signing, but more importantly, the digest, they would make sure that you wouldn't get an, an unnecessarily, an SBOM linked to the wrong one, even if they wound up being loose, right? Because the digest says at the end of the day, they both say Alpine, but if they have different digests, sorry. Who is, who or what is responsible for kind of maintaining or identifying the relationship between one of these SPDX metadata packages, whatever, and then the image. Because it's, I mean, it's kind of similar if you think about it to what we have in registries. We have like manifests, blobs, and we don't like write like a, a tag anywhere in there, you know, explicitly. So like if it's the fact that like a registry, for example, is responsible for linking like one of these um, SPDX things, the, the Perl <laughs> to, um, to like the image, why, why do we need to keep like the tag in there? Like it's kind of the same logic. Well, the, why do we need to keep the tag? Isn't the tag is an optional qualifier, right? Yeah, I guess what I'm saying is like, I don't think there should be these optional qualifiers because at best, like they're right for like a short amount of time and then they're quickly wrong. Um, I think that they are valuable in context with the timestamp that the document was created. Um, and they're used for hints to humans. They're not used as for the computers to um, compare these artifacts. So I, I think, I mean, I, I see value in them if, an engineer is looking through this SPDX document and is looking at this artifact, they can see the timestamp that the document was created and in context with the repository URL or the tag um, can make, you know, assumptions about that. I think we're not trying to, because I do agree with you that they're not going to be true Forever. I mean, this is the internet, things change very fast. So I think that we would be kidding ourselves to think that we could find a way to create this artifact URL that would hold forever. Um, and I think it's also important to keep in mind that these don't need to be, 
These don't need to always be identical. We're trying to get them as close as possible, but 100% of the time, that's not gonna be perfectly comparable, if that makes sense. That's, that's fair. So this is not quite solving the reproducibility or perma, permanent URL it's use case, even it looks and feels like it could be close to that. Yeah. I guess the question I have is, aren't these always sort of presented in the context of an artifact, in the context of an image? Or you're suggesting that you need all this extra metadata because you would actually find the SPDX thing without any link, for example, to an image in a registry. And then in that case, though, if there's no image, would it really be useful at all? I think the, the real goal is, because the big conversation we've been having in the SPDX group is the, the concept of uniqueness. How do you make sure we're referencing something that's unique and making sure that the property names that have URI or URL on them don't suggest that you have to go find them at that location. We want to very explicitly support that content can move or be copied and enable those workflows. And I, and I love, I can't remember if it was Vincent or somebody who else was, that whether the content gets dual, multiple published to multiple public registries or I moved it into a private environment, where that thing is at any one point shouldn't matter. But when the SPDX is referencing it, there absolutely must be something that is in there that says, I don't know how I got dis disassembled and reassembled, but when I'm trying to verify that I am an SPDX for this thing, that there's a piece of data that says, this is the very unique identifier and the digest seemed like the thing to do that. I think the most interesting part of this conversation would should the digest be in the name if that's the required versus version. And I guess I'd have to study the Perl spec again to figure out how important is the fact that it says optional to really do the thing. Because for any one of these, the idea is you go read this entry and decide for a Debian package, this is how I compare things. For you know OCI content, this is how I compare a thing. That's what we're trying to enable. And I guess there's no way for that yeah. Perl to be dynamic, or at least not, not, the, not the main Perl, but the, uh, the optional qualifiers. Oh, in other words, when it moves into another registry that you can update that? Yeah. No, that would, exactly. that would update the whole SPDX. That would update the whole SPOM and it would have a new digest uh, itself. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, we actually, that, um, this is actually a very similar conundrum that we've seen in the past of like how best to even say like an RPM is actually what it should be because um, with in rel, uh, Red Hat and otherwise, you know, not uncommonly people might even have their own patch to bash and they fetch the source RPM, add their patch, rebuild it. And so it shows up as like, oh, it's the pack, you know, it's the particular version of bash or whatever. Um, but to go back and say that it's actually not the same same one, is it the one that we support or not the one we support? We could have the same name and a lot of these same things, but if it's in a situation at the time that it was built, you know, and you look back at this kind of audit log attestation trail of what the thing you're holding, you know, the image or whatever, you look at the SPDX, if you want to say, oh, actually it was not the same digest of the image that I thought it was. Uh, so it really, it would be like the, required piece of metadata in the name, the name and registry it came from all that kind of stuff, just optional of like at the time that it was run or time that it was built, uh, time that the SPDX was generated. So in that way, I think it's fine for a lot of those things to stay as optional. Now. So really the digest is the thing that would be in a required name or otherwise you know, name version piece. Yeah, I kind of um, personally like the digest as the name. Would it be both the repo name and the digest? Um, like concatenating them together? Yeah, uh, we have a format today that says repo colon, you know. Yeah. No, repo, sorry, at symbol. Yeah. That, um, I guess, do we then always assume that the digest is SHA-256? Do we drop the at SHA-256? No. Still... <laughs> we, we keep the SHA-256. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, already, we're, already, 
Oh my gosh, yeah, we're already like looking at other hashes and stuff like that. So it's okay. not, that's not permanent. So we could change, so then would we just, there wouldn't be a version um, at all? Then, so would the name be uh, repository at SHA-256 colon digest? Would version be the tag since it's optional? Um, yeah, well, yeah. This is funny. I, I know that it, I, I like to think that we're not completely bike shedding, but this is kind of a, we're, it feels like we're flipping pearl on its head, but the semantics for them to actually be meaningful as you're, it's meaningful as it sounds like they're intended to be meaningful. Um, it feels like we're having to flip, flip the usage of it a little bit on its head. So I'm sorry for that. I think it's a good discussion. Oh, no. Rose, you, you maybe you've looked at it uh, closer. Is version so optional that it's irrelevant? Like, if you look at the digest, if you think of the name, the name today, you know, vis-a-vis -vis that you can rename things, doesn't mean you should, but that's, a, you know, separate that for a second. The name is the, is the name of the thing, and the version is the digest, because the idea is I can keep on pushing things to the same repo, and the thing that makes it unique is the digest. It just so happens that digest is you know generally globally unique, so there's some extra benefits to it. Yeah, but there's nothing I, wrong with putting version as the digest. I think what I was thinking is if if it is optional, um, and so somebody because the version is really the only thing that um, across registries and repositories, if the image is the same, like identifies two. Um, identical binaries in different locations as being the same, right? So if if those if the version is optional and someone doesn't put it in, then we just have like OCI. If we are doing, if I'm looking at this first example, um, it'd be OCI artifacts slash OCI dot image um, slash. I guess without the shot, then it's there's only hints around it that may be different in different registries. But I guess if we're not trying to be 100% in comparing these things equal, then it's not necessary. It just feels like um, it's strongly encouraged. <laughs> um, and I think optional doesn't capture the emphasis on the um, usefulness of it. Well, when you look at the description in the Perl spec, it would state what the, how it's used for this type. Like if you look at the couple, several of the other ones, they all make variations on, you know, how they get used within this generic spec. Like how does if we compare it to the others, does this really stand out so unique that it it's, it feels wrong? Oh, right. As it is right now or with the... Uh, no, sorry, the, with this proposed. If you took the proposal and then put version as being the, the digest and name being the repo name, and we basically put a description that says, you know, the version, while the prospect says it's optional, for this particular one, it's actually required to figure out how it's unique. Is that a... Would, would that seem strangely inconsistent? Because quite frankly, if any other package doesn't have a version, I don't know how an SPDX would reference something that was not a version. Like the whole point is it mm -hmm. should have. Yeah, I think that's actually something we're going to talk about at the SPDX doc fest because version is component version is required as according to the NTIA minimum requirements for an SBOM. And so there is a, uh, I think there's a gap there that needs to be addressed because I agree version, if you just have a name, um, you know, name the same name, but different versions are not the same thing. So um, I, I don't know enough about the Perl spec to know whether us saying, you know, this is, I think what I, what I think is that if we said this name or the version, which is the digest is required for OCI artifacts, I think it would not be enforceable as required. So I think we could say it's required for OCI artifacts, but there would be actually no way to enforce that. 
So just going through some new specs that try to make the base spec be generic and flexible while artifact specifics can make them more narrow. Mm -hmm. Like this is the conversation is the artifact spec, you know, says blobs are not required. But if you were use something like the container image, you can say for this use of it, they are required. I'm wondering if that's how this Perl spec is being used to say, look, there's some flexibility in how Perl is being used. When it's being used in the SPDX scenario, version is required because what else, is, if an SPDX can't target a specific thing, then what's the purpose of the, the SBOM? Yeah. What's, the, what's the integrity of the SBOM, so to speak? Well, I mean, we can sure try <laughs> in our proposal. And if, I mean, if we get consensus that if, assuming that we could say that people approved and then if it got denied, we could come back and discuss it again um, or have a contingency plan. I think it's worth a try. <laughs> People have have uh, opinions, one way or another, on that. Um, it, it's probably worth surfacing as a conversation topic, but I would, yeah, you know, hope for the best, plan for the worst. They say no, it's actually going to be optional, and you have to figure out another way to bolt it on. Then, you know, maybe we just use overload the name field for what we've just discussed. Um, but I think like in the kind of larger meta conversation, like you said, that, you know, if NTI has certain requirements, then that sounds like a different piece to be reckoned with. And you could just pile our little matchsticks onto that box timber right in the tinder um, to be fought. I wouldn't actually go trying to fight the fight just for our, the use case we've just described. Right. Um, We'd have to figure out how to make it work regardless. So okay. So what I'm what I'm hearing, and please um uh say if you don't agree, but what I'm hearing is that if we can um say for OCI artifacts that the version, which is the digest, is required, are folks okay with the proposal as it is right now? No. Okay. Um but so I I don't want to derail this too much, but like do you have more context from SPDX's side? I see a lot of links to like Perl, but is it a foregone conclusion that they want to use Perl for this? Yes. Because it seems like we're kind of bending over backwards to fit something into Perl that it wasn't meant to do. Um, yes, we want to use Perl. I, I would like to read more, uh, but it, the the spec or the proposal in its current form, I, I would rip out the like truncated media type thing from the name. Um, it seems like a strange thing to do, but like, I don't know. I, I'd want to see the proposal. Full media type and then encode it. So I'm just trying to like, this is one of the things we struggle with. Do we just encode it with the full media type so it, it, the slash doesn't become a namespace? Or do we? Well, I think there's two types of namespaces here involved, right? One is the group ID, you know, the owner ID. Um, for example, in Docker IO, and, okay. and the other is the, the version you're talking about, the media type. I think there's two namespaces, so it might be confusing. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. In the Perl, there's they've got basically slashes separate out whether it's a namespace or a name. They don't actually have the nested namespace concept. Concept. So, if you had it separated out. Yeah. So if you if you literally put the literal string that we use our application slash VND, that slash makes it look like application is the namespace and then VND is the name, which is obviously not what we want. So I, 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 I agree with you, John. That, I'm just wondering, do we encode it or do we do it? It somehow? just doesn't seem like an appropriate place to put a media type. Like it's a, the namespace or name doesn't seem to correspond to the type, right? Um, it does in other ones. Let me go find another example. I think it was Debian. We also had talked about putting the type as an optional qualifier. I think that's reasonable. I mean, if, if really all we want to do is have a standard way to reference a digest, I mean, uh, do we if, care? If, if it has a digest and it has, you know, like you see that it's an OCI, you know, within the OCI type, Perl type, uh, then presumably you could go to registries that you're 
that you trust and or use the hint to you know look for that thing and then find the descriptor that actually tells you the media type which presumably that descriptor that you'd fetch from the OCI registry would have all the trust around like to actually trust this descriptor and you know blah blah blah. It seems like packing on the media type in there. I don't know. Yeah. Okay, well, I am I'm fine with putting the type as an optional qualifier. I think we had we the reason that we put it at the front is just to make it a little more clear for but yeah, if the Shah is all that we care about, then it's fine to go at the end. Yeah, I might just have like PKG colon OCI slash digest. Uh, everything else it doesn't matter. OCI artifact, you mean? Uh, if, no, I, that seems redundant, but maybe. Um, I mean, if, if all we have there is a digest, if all we care about is a digest, it could be literally anything. So like, I don't know that it's specific to the OCI artifact stuff. Well, that's all we care same. about when it comes to comparing if two things are identical, but I don't think that means that the other information there is not useful for humans trying to um, Sure. Um, do, do you, but like, do you only intend to reference things that specifically aren't images? Um, like, I think it would make sense to be able to reference images in this way. No, this is so work, yeah. Work. The, first, the first two examples are images. Okay, I don't know why it's OCI dash artifacts. I think OCI it's covers generic everything. Generic way to reference all of them was the intent. Um, but also on the namespace, I don't know if you can just do package colon OCI artifacts slash digest. It looks like, if I understand this, you need something in the namespace. Like I don't think it can be blank. It's the package type is what OCI artifact is, or it's this. Uh, the um, yeah, the type. So we need a type, like we are coming up with a name to describe the type of package for any generic yeah. artifact in a registry. I, I, so namespace is optional, name is required. I think type should be OCI and name should be the digest and everything else is useful information, but like that, just that piece is, is similarly applicable to OCI artifact stuff, but also OCI images. I, I don't know. I think I think the artifact is an OCI. I'm sorry. The argument is that an OCI image is an OCI artifact. It's a naming. Yeah. I, well, I, I know. I would prefer brevity. Uh, you know, if I have to type this ever, but um, if you really like the string artifacts, I'm not going to argue too much. Yeah, I would say artifact typing artifact is not going to. Um, change too much in how long it takes you to type that that and I'm not trying to be um OCI object um you know you're just, just OCI it's probably fine yeah and then we're just redoing all the naming thing the piece uh, so Rose what it does like I'm looking at the examples for Deviant or Deb and others I just had the sense that the namespace was required like I don't think you can actually say package colon OCI artifacts slash digest. I think there does need to be something, or not digest, but slash repo colon, repo at digest. It looks like we do need something in between. And I thought that's how we wound up using that here. Yeah, that's, that's why I mentioned it. Yeah, the library yeah. part means it's in Docker's root. It's not necessarily that's the, you know, the only org path. Actually, I take that back. I just noticed namespace Gem not, doesn't have a namespace. Namespace is not required. In fact, in the first pass of this, we didn't even have a namespace. We said, don't put a namespace for OCI artifacts. And then we changed yeah, it. Yeah, I just found another example as I scrolled through. So never mind on that part. So back to the, the thing, whether it's an OCI image, a Helm chart, a WASM, whatever, we felt like that was information that was valuable to put. If we don't put it in the namespace, whether it's because the encoder reason or otherwise, do we want to put that as uh, an optional parameter 
Yes. If, it, if we're not putting in the namespace, I would say yes to an optional parameter. And then because it's an optional parameter, it's easier to encode in a sense of reading it. Yeah, so we would just have type or something as the um, qualifier name and then type equals oci.image or cncf.wasm or. Well, in this case, there will be, we'll just go back to what John was saying is don't, don't short, shorten the, the artifact type property. So it would be VND slash VND application mm -hmm. slash VND, you know, okay. dot OCI dot OCI image, blah, 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 right? The, the exact, including the version. So in that case, you have version independence, I guess, if you will. It kind of sets you up for really make it unique and, and narrow. Okay, so we want to get rid of, say that there's no namespace for um, OCI artifact types and then move the um, type to an optional qualifier. Is that consensus for what we'd like to see here? Or am I missing anything else? We got John on board. <laughs> Okay, so if um, if I take those two action items, um, are we uh, is do I have the blessing of this um, working group to submit a um, pull request to the Perl specification? I, I can uh, send it to the dev email list too once it's open, so that folks can choose to monitor it if they'd like. I don't think my blessing counts for anything, but I'm excited to see this move forward. All right. Awesome. Well, I, I really appreciate everyone's feedback. And um, yeah, that's all I got. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Brandon, uh, well, I guess there's only one Brandon left, so unique identifier resolved. Um, did you want to take a couple of minutes just to tease the topic, or do you just want to? Let people get a break between the next meeting and we'll queue it up for next week. Um, yeah, I think I think it's kind of um, well, as much as we discussed, it was kind of just like um, Vincent thinking me. <laughs> we decided to want to chat about it. Um, but I guess from what Vincent said earlier, it's going to be talking about like where is image encryption? Um, you know, what are the different registries? Who had the different implementations it's in right now? Um, I think some maybe some of the use cases where um, it's being used. I think I'm guessing that will be the main the main discussion topics, and then how we can go ahead with this in the OCI spec. I, I'm watching people I'm watching my squares drop off quick. <laughs> Brandon, Vincent, you, uh, great, perfect conversation. Can you? queue up something for next week. I'll put the template in now for next week if you want to just pop the agenda item in there. And if there's any pre-reading, uh, then folks can jump on. I mean, from a from a facilitator of the conversation, that's what I would say from a, um, hey, I'd love to figure out how to support that across more registries. I have a different hat that I would wear that figure out how, how can I help. Um, but just from a process. Okay. Well, part, part of this was even just like in the artifacts repo to have Links to different media types. So in 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 the in the conversation of like, here's different artifact media types that you could see in the wild, and here's a link to how to work with that media type particularly. Um, how how that was, Steve. That was my, that was part of the invitation. Is like how how have they progressed in in their usage use case of that, uh, and can we get that merged? Because uh, Brandon had had a couple of PRs against a couple of projects out for a long time that were still not merged, and I didn't see much conversation around actually tracking media types that you could see in the wild that were pushed to registries. Sorry, I just noticed my. my um, I think this is where there's a little disconnect and where the artifacts repo is at and what it was trying to do. There was a concept originally of quote a clearinghouse of 
media types, but that was something we pushed to IANA. Um, I have wanted to put stuff in the artifact repo to say, hey, here are all the media types. And by the way, here's some localized strings and icons you can use to say what they are. So there was a, a separate angle of what I think you're asking for. But the last comment that I saw in the artifacts stuff that talked about this, I thought I put a comment on it that kind of framed that, reframed it. So I, look, I'm happy to have a slight conversation to merge or some of the media PRs. for next week. Yeah, we just need to merge some PRs. If somebody can ping me on the specific PR we're talking about, that'd be great because I, I think where I'm, I might be, I can certainly be misremembering mis some of this stuff. So, but can we queue this up for next week for a conversation? Brandon, does that work? Yeah, sounds good. All right, great. Sounds good. With that, we'll, uh, Amy did put a teaser for the OCI summit. Um, so she'll get something out to get some agenda things going there as well. Yeah, it's unfortunate. I, I, I've shelved any, any and all of my hopes for travel for this fall. So um, I really, I think I got my hopes up a lot to go to KubeCon and the OSS Summit um, up in Seattle, but I um, don't think it's re uh, responsible at this point. There's too many people's lives being disrupted by the Delta variant. So um, I registered for that OCI Summit to be virtual, but that's not nearly what I was hoping for, so. Uh, oh well. I, I think we're all feeling various forms of what you're saying. Um, at least virtual is better than nothing. So um, for me, I don't have to physically travel in a plane, but um, I'm, I, I am considering the KubeCon conversation. But the point is the event should still go on, I think is the plan and it'll count for virtual and anybody that does come online. Uh, anybody that does uh, come in person. I don't think we're suggesting we want to cancel that, cancel the, the OCI summit. No. Okay. So cool. I think, I think the hope was just to have in-person camaraderie. So virtual yes. is less. Than yes. All right. Um, All right. Bye, everybody. See you next week.